Since the release of Counter-Strike 2, the lack of a streamlined minimap compiler by Valve has frustrated many map makers. What makes it much more of a tease is that Valve even left a compiler that had no documentation and was hard to use. Leaving the map making community in shambles, many level designers have resorted to their dream designs being absent of any map overview. Thankfully, Jim Wood has taken it upon himself again to create for the community a tool that would fill in the void left by Valve. If this sounds familiar, it's because this has happened before in Source 1, and Valve's consistency, if anything, is nothing to be surprised about. Jim Wood was gracious enough to sit down in a session and show me how to use his Radgen tool to create minimaps for Counter-Strike 2. I'm your host, Sammy Chimonahihi Aliyubi, and in this episode of CS2 Mapping Academy, we look at how to use Radgen for minimap creation. The first step is to make sure you have the latest .NET Runtime 8. You can find the direct link in the video description below. Make sure to restart your computer if you do install it for the process to work. If you have .NET Runtime 8 installed, we can proceed to install the latest RadGen version. Grab it directly from the Discord or click directly on the link in the video description below. Extract the zip file and do not change the name of the folder output at once or it will not work. The file might be flagged by the antivirus, but go ahead and ignore that. Make sure that Counter-Strike 2 is not running for the process to work correctly. Run radgen install.bat and when prompted, press Y to accept. This will do three things. The first is copy the correct files into the respective folders. The second is enabling Radgen by manipulating the GameInfo.gi file that is normally locked when the game is open. The third is the creation of a vConsole template page that will be used to compile Radgen when ready. Modifying the GameInfo.gi may scare some of you, but let's explain why it has to be done. In order for the materials to show up across all add-ons without massive amounts of tedious copying, we need to modify the GameInfo.gi file. This is done through Radgen Enable, which also has a Radgen Disable for when you are finished using Radgen. Make sure you do not have Counter-Strike 2 running when enabling and disabling Radgen. You must enable this when editing, and disable this when you want to play online. For this video, we went ahead and made a map to showcase the basics. We want to make sure we covered our bases with the creation of counter-terrorist and terrorist spawns, bomb sites, and varying elevations to start. Other important entities, such as bizones, will be added later in the video to showcase the procedural generation of the minimap. Once you've finalized your map, it's time to set up the entities necessary to run Radgen. Place an entity called Radgen Config on your level anywhere. In the entity, there is a link that you can open up that has written instructions of the program if you want to delve into the finer details. For now, this video will give you all the basic knowledge necessary to get Radgen running. There are two workflow approaches to creating your minimap. We will show you how to approach both workflows, starting with workflow number one. This is where we will create separate meshes from the hammer geometry to generate the minimap. Workflow number two will use specifically named selection sets containing hammer geometry to tell Radgen what to generate. We're going to take all the floor faces that we want to be mapped out and create a duplicate of them with copy and paste special. Make sure to do this in faces mode and begin to simplify the topology of the copied and pasted floor plan as much as possible. You don't want to have faces where there are nine vertices or more since Radgen will begin to crawl when it comes to its calculations. You can change this set limit if needed, but it's best to avoid overcomplicated geometry. If it's too complex, it will be skipped. With all the floor faces selected, change the material on it to the path material. With our map layout finished, we need to tell Radgen it's ready to compile the minimap. Press the tilde key to open up the V console. On the right hand side, we can see the Convar helper. We can see the Counter-Strike 2 workshop pull-down, but what we want is to access user page 1. Click the COG import button, and when prompted, select yes to go to the CSGO Radgen folder and point it to the INI file in there. 
This will load the buttons that are auto-generated to try and identify the possible maps in your add-on. You can have it look through your add-on folder to update the maps you have in there by clicking the Update Page Template All Maps button. If you want, you can manually edit the buttons to point it to the correct map path file. Right-click and select Edit to access the button name, description, and the file name. With the buttons correctly set up, click on the Generate button that points to your map to run RadGen and generate the most up-to-date radar. You may have Windows Defender try and block it, so be ready to bypass a warning if needed. This creation process will create files that will be referenced. To see these files, in your Add-ons folder, browse to Panorama, Images, and then Overhead Maps. For this example, we can see the TGA, PNG, and PSD files that have been generated. In your game folder, there will be compiled files that are referenced in the game. The TXT file telling how to line it up in the game will also be generated automatically. With all the necessary files generated, we can see the results immediately. Run your map without a need to do any compiling from Hammer. Sometimes, the radar may need you to tab out and tab back in to see the results. Worst case, restart the game if you don't see the results. Our initial generated minimap shows the overview of the test map, along with the bomb sites. For workflow number one, you can use the other materials available to continue to manually create the minimap. When you have areas of the map that need to account for verticality, use the overlap material. It isn't necessary to add to a selection set for this workflow method. However, I continue to do so out of habit and for tidy keeping. When we want to see our changes, run Generate Radar again. We are not using Update Radar, as that is useful in manually bringing in files modified in other programs such as Substance. This will be covered in an advanced video later on. For now, think of it as Generate Radar running RadGen directly within Hammer to create the files needed. And think of Update Radar as using other files you want to bring in to be referenced within your map. One of the entities I did not initially place down was the Bizone entity. After creating the mesh tied entity for both counter-terrorist and terrorist Bizones, we can run RadGen again to show how they automatically got added. Searching for RadGen in your Material Asset Browser will show you which materials can be generated. Some of these will be generated automatically, such as Bizones. A list of these materials and their case uses can be found on the website linked within the RadGen entity. There are several entities that we can use for minimap generation. One useful one is a divider entity. Place this entity at the height you want to distinguish each level split. You can have multiple dividers for multiple floors, just make sure none of them are the same height as any other. With this entity, you won't need to have the overlap material used and can keep path on your faces. You can define the min and max points for the ceiling and floor using the RadGen ceiling and RadGen floor entities. The color gradients for these can be found in the RadGen config entity. If you have multiple floors, you can use multiple dividers in conjunction with multiple ceiling slash floor entities. Workflow 2 involves taking existing meshes and adding them directly to selection sets using the pre-designated names that are listed on the website. Certain objects such as props will default to cover if added to the RadGen selection set instead of the RadGen cover set. You can use a mixture of both Workflow 1 and Workflow 2, or use either of these methods exclusively to generate your radar. You can use outside programs such as Photoshop or Substance to customize your minimap even further. This will be detailed in a follow-up tutorial in the future. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on RadGen minimap creation. Please like, subscribe, and join our Discord for more help, to participate in all our community events, and to play our games and maps.